Well, good afternoon, everyone. You can see that this is another one of my videos. And I'm doing something a little different today. I normally sit down, and today you see that I'm standing. And that's because I let two faculty at SCC talk me into something that I'm probably going to regret, but that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes we have to push ourselves a little bit. So we have two, well, three guests with us. And let's start with Dave Schmitter, is a physics and mathematics professor here at the college. I think a lot of people know Dave. I'm a little bit disappointed in Dave because normally Dave was wearing a bow tie. And I don't see a bow tie today. And that's okay. Yeah, no, my dog would just pull it off me. It'd be very uncomfortable. All right. Because that's kind of your go to uh, signature uh, clothing. That I'd well, I also have a lab coat with superhero patches on it, too. I'm, I didn't wear that either. So. Okay. And then we have Tim Matan. He is a business and economics professor for SEC. And Tim, I don't recall you wearing any particular type of bow tie or anything like that. No, I, I, I'm pretty, yeah, we're econ, we're pretty cash. So. Okay. Yeah. And then we have Katie Novak, who is liaison to the president, special projects coordinator. And Katie failed in her responsibilities of helping me navigate or sometimes elude these kinds of activities. So what we're going to do today is you heard me talk about in different videos about how important it is if you can work into your schedule on the weekends or to have a hobby, have something that gets your mind off of things, allows you to refresh. And it's my understanding, I like to do live edge woodworking and other kinds of woodworking and run and do other things. But I think that I've heard that Dave and Tim are experts and they teach CE, a CE course for us in improv, improvisation. Is that correct? That's correct. And I know, I do not know anything about this. So I volunteered and I think Katie kind of volunteered. Uh -huh. a little bit Katie, Katie was volunteered. I was volunteered. And so okay. that's what we're gonna do in this video. They're gonna show us how to do it and I'm going to try to participate as best I can. Sure. Is that fair? Yeah. That's fair. That's perfectly fair. And trust me, um, it will be as painless as possible okay. for you. So all you have to do is free your mind, be creative, forget about all the meetings that you had this morning and the ones that are coming up this afternoon. So do the impossible. Do the impossible. Okay. And just uh, allow your mind to just do and say whatever you want. So, uh, but you're right, uh, Dave and I have been uh, doing improv now for a couple of years. We teach uh, through continuing education, Improv 101, and we also have an improv group called Occasionally Hilarious. So we perform, or we were performing about once a month out and about. We have several SEC employees that are involved in it, and, uh, but now because of all the COVID stuff, we're not. So we're doing it this way. Um, but today, first thing I'd like to do, Paul, is to give you a few of the basics. All right. All right. So there are four basic rules that you have to follow when you do improv. All right. The first one is called agreement. Yes. And have you ever heard of the yes and when it comes to improv? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the yes part of it means that you agree with what is given to you. The and is the second rule and it's called adding information. Yes, I agree. And let me give you this information as well. Okay. So those are two rules. Yes. And so uh, the third one is commitment. Once you're in the scene, you're in it. All right. Become a character. Uh, if you're Southern, if you're a cowboy, if you're uh, a physicist, whatever, you become the character and you commit to it and you just say the stuff that comes off the top of your head. The fourth rule is to listen. Listen to what everybody else is saying around you. Listen to the story that's being told. Figure out how you can add to the story. All right. Tim, so, there, this, these rules aren't just rules for a good relationship. Yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 they're great. They're, they're, Great for committing, communication. Committing to your partner. And then the last rule was, what's the last rule? Listen. Listening. See, I wasn't listening. Yeah, I struggle with that one, right, Katie? <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's do this, okay. So, so Dave and I are gonna show you a game uh, that we do. It's a game that we like to do. So just so you can get an idea as to what we do, 
So this is called the ABC game, which means that every sentence has to start with the next letter of the alphabet. All right. Oh. So, Paul, uh, what is, what's your favorite color, Paul? Blue. Blue. Very good. Dave, the subject is blue. Blue. Got it. Katie, uh, what's your favorite letter of the alphabet? Not A or Z, please. V. V is in Victor. Mm -hmm. Got it. Dave, start. Victor, I'm just, I'm feeling so down. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm so blue. Well, you know, uh, you wear a lot of blue shirts all the time. So maybe if you changed up your color a little bit. Xylophones are, are everywhere. And they're, the, the sound is just irritating my ears and I can't. It, it, that's, I think that's what's bringing me down. Yellow is very bright. Maybe you should try that. Zoinks, I didn't even think about a different color. It just... It... Almost every day I tell you, wear something different, Hector. <laughs> but, but, but I didn't write, I don't write it ever, I don't ever write it down. I believe uh, it's Victor. calendar's lost. I believe it's Victor, and Victor, I would say that, have you spoken to your counselor about your blue issue? <laughs> do you have a counselor? I'm not sure that you actually have somebody that's involved. I lost the letter. I, e, e. You're on E. E. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, everyone keeps recommending names to me, and I, I can't pick just one because I feel bad. I don't want to not leave the other ones out. Is that All right. So, Paul, this is, this is how we play this game. So, it's every letter of the alphabet. All right? So... <laughs> Remember that because at the end of the day or end of the video, we're going to have you do the same thing okay. with Dave. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so Dave, how do you use improv day to day? So, you know, it really taking improv really changed the way I approach my, my life in the classroom. I've, I've always been kind of silly a little, and, um, but I, I'm a, kind of a rule follower at the same time. Uh, and it really just has made me relax in the classroom and realize I don't have to, if I, if I don't cover something specifically one day uh, because a student has a question, I get to it the next day. And it really has kind of relaxed my, my I mean, it's, it's beyond just talking in silly voices in class, which now I also do, uh, but also just uh, being a lot more open to taking a class and saying, and some, if someone has a weird question, going with that question and seeing where it's related, um, it uh, it helps me. It, the rule thing too is an important thing. Is that a lot of people think of improv as this kind of crazy free for all, but we really follow these rules, and and that plays into my, my classroom. Is that I, I try and stick to very important rules, like talking about why I do things in the class, and and I, that's an important thing. And I, the more I tell students why I'm doing something up front and the motivation for it, the more they just kind of go with what I'm what I'm doing. It's uh, really has kind of refocused how I approach the classroom and I'm a lot more relaxed and feel a lot more comfortable with what I'm doing there. And the, and Dave brought up a good point. Um, improv is made up on the spot, but you use your background, you use your education, you use the things that you know to do improv. Um, that's why some of the funniest stuff comes because people know you know, on SNL and all that, because they, they know a lot of stuff and they use political and all this other stuff. But the thing is, is that you use what's up here. So just to get that flowing, we're going to do a quick game uh, that we do as a warm up. It's called Minister's Cat. So Minister's Cat is a parlor game from the 1700s, 1800s, something like that. And it starts off with the minister's cat is a, and we're going to get a letter from Katie in a second. So, uh, and you have to come up with an adjective for that cat. Okay. So it'll go Dave, me, and then you, Paul. Okay. And we'll go around the circle a couple times. All right. So Katie, another letter, please. G. G. All right. Dave. The minister's cat is a gregarious cat. The minister's cat is a gracious cat. The minister's cat is a giving cat. The minister's cat is a gangrene-ridden cat. The minister's cat is a gargantuan cat. The minister's cat is gorgeous. Cat. <laughs> the minister's cat is a gargling cat. The minister's cat is a gorge at the buffet cat. 
I don't understand. What? Say that again. How did you get away with that? Because this is the creativity part. The Minstrel's Cat is a gorge at the buffet. Oh, gorge at the buffet. I thought you said gorgeous buffet. Okay. No, gorge at the buffet. There's a new rule. I see how it's going to be, Tim. The miniatures. The minister's cat is a goofy cat. The minister's cat is a green with envy cat. The minister's cat is a glacier ice skating cat. Uh, the minister's cat is a gentle cat. Mm -hmm. All right. Minister's Very good. Nice job. Nice job. Very good. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I got you, Dave. All right. So, so as the leader of the group, I get to stop the games whenever I think they're complete. So I okay. always want to have uh, a good one, too. Just, I'm not trying to rush us too much, but you can keep these meeting. I mean, these videos not mm -hmm. too long. So, you think we could get rolling on? Yep. Yep. I think so. This one can be a little longer too little because longer. it's so okay. interactive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So in order to get uh, you to start thinking along the lines of telling a story and get into the yes and kind of component of it, we want you to also think yes and. So we're going to create a story. So uh, Katie, what's your favorite fairy tale? Rapunzel. Rapunzel, okay. We're going to tell a story about Rapunzel that probably doesn't meet Disney quality, okay? Remind me real quick, Rapunzel, this is the story. Long hair up in the, okay. tower. Yep. up in the tower. And at this point, we can make Rapunzel anything or anyone we want. That's the one fun thing about improv is that you get to make up anything about it. So, so we're going to, Dave's going to start the story. It's going to go Dave, me, and then you. Okay. And then okay. Dave's going to give us an opening line. And I'm going to say yes, and then add more. And then you're going to say yes, and, and add a sentence, one sentence. Okay? okay. We're going to go around for a little bit and figure it out. Okay. Okay. Rapunzel, go Dave. Once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in a castle. Yes, and she loved to swing through the vines on her wonderfully long hair. Yes, and she decided that she needed to figure out a way to use those talents to earn a proper living. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, and so she, she found uh, the perfect correspondence course <clears throat> to take. Yes, and it didn't include typing, so that made her very happy. Yes, and what it did include was applied statistics, which she grew to love quickly. <laughs> yes, and uh, all of her mathematical training from when she was younger uh, ended up furthering her career in, in statistics. Yes, and she was able to take the statistics and, and uh, apply it to the tree growth and estimate when a tree would blossom. Yes, and she also used some of these, this interest in statistics to select a, a partner that fell within the 95% confidence interval of her interest. All right. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and do another story, a quick story, uh, but say the yes and in your head. You don't have to say it out loud. All right. Let's just get uh, a nice story from beginning to end. Okay. All right. Um, Favorite, uh, Katie, I need to know what your favorite uh, flavor of cake is. Chocolate. Chocolates, okay. The theme is chocolate. Do you want to start, Paul? Remind me how we start. Just The theme is about chocolate, so you can make it about anything that you want about chocolate. Chocolate has a number of very, very healthy properties that are often um, understated. <laughs> One of those properties happens to be uh, the joy it brings to young children. Yes, and the one thing that most people don't know is that chocolate, if you eat enough of it, will make you fly. Well, what's great about flying is that if you are able to fly because of chocolate, you might see the Milky Way, which is a form of chocolate. <laughs> And the Milky Way will uh, open your eyes to the beauty that is our universe. Yes, and if you take cookies with you, you can actually dunk them and eat them while you are flying through the beauty of our universe. Well, one of the things that's awesome about chocolate, it grounds you in delicious flavor. <laughs> yes, and the, the, the flavor opens your palate so that you're, you're willing to try chocolate in everything from 
from breakfast cereal to the most extravagant steaks. All right, there we go. Yes, we'll we'll call it we'll call it good. With that's probably a mole sauce, but I couldn't figure. I, I was going to say something like you can weaponize chocolate to oh. entice your kids to do things they don't want to do. Yeah. So, keeping keeping this storytelling going, I'm going to actually have just you and Dave tell a story. All right, and this next part is called change, and what it is is it forces you. What you're going to do is you're going to say something, and if I don't like it, I'll say change, and you have to stay within the theme. Okay. And change, like it, like if you were, we were talking about chocolate, and we were talking about the Milky Way. If I didn't like it, I'd say change. You would say something about going into space. I'd say change again. Always think about this, Paul. Is Im improv. You can go to the absurd. All right. Okay. The more absurd, sometimes the more creative you can be. And it allows you so many different avenues, even if you know nothing about the topic okay. at all. Okay. All right. So, so Katie, you want to be like a politician. What? Wait, I'm recording, so I shouldn't say that. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway. Right. So, so, Katie, um, uh, favorite pie. What's your favorite pie? Um, banana cream. Banana cream. All right. So Dave, this is a story of how banana cream is invented. Okay. Okay. You're going to start. We'll get it going and then I'll do some changing. All right. Go. Long ago in the deep depth <coughs> depths of the great city of Boston, there was a young man who loved bananas and loved milk and all he ever wanted to do was find a way to combine them other than just pouring it in his cereal. Paul. One of the first things he noticed is that when he was able to put those two things together at the same time, it was most delicious. So he started making circles with those two ingredients with his hand. Dave. <clears throat> and uh, what happened with the circles is that they started to, to hypnotize him and he started to, to start to hallucinate and start to see. Dave. <clears throat> he started, it started to, to cause him to want to fly into the Dave. air. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It caused him to think he was a monkey. And he uh, started eating bananas like a monkey would. And then he, oh. he ran out of patience with all of the nonsense and used this as magical powers to create a delicious pie structure. Change. That's not fair. I don't want to change, Tim. You can't change me. I'm too old. Okay, change. Um, he, uh, was in the of he used some of his great wealth to hire the best bakers in the world to create the very first ever Boston cream pie. Dave. <clears throat> and that pie was, was spread throughout the world, filled with bananas and cream and whatever else is in a Boston cream Dave. pie. <clears throat> filled with bananas and cream and popsicles, which was a really odd choice. Oh. Um, he used the uh, tremendous profits from this endeavor to invest in a circus. Change. To invest in a... Can I still say used the... Um, invest in a... Oh, so use the profits to invest in a, a uh, train. Change. Use the investment, use the profits to invest in a blue coat. Okay, go. Keep going. Oh, is it me? Oh, yeah. I, I thought it was Dave next. <laughs> no, I haven't said oh, his name. Oh, oh, got it. Didn't know what the rules. So That's right. he, he, he invested in a blue coat in order to be the sharpest dressed person in the upcoming ball that was designed specifically around the development of the first Boston cream pie. Dave. <clears throat> and when he went to the ball, he saw the most gorgeous woman that he'd ever Dave. seen. He saw some lady he met online. There was a 95% uh, match, but... Oh. And it turns out it was not a good match, not even close. She took the drawings and the... Uh, she took the drawings and the recipe from the cream pie. She started coming up with an even slightly better version of it. She um, pretty much ruined his life. 
All right. Yes, he did. She did. All right. Very good. 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 Great. That was fun. It was a little, a little tricky. It is. It is. So, now this time we're gonna go. We're we're gonna end okay. on the ABC game again, and it's gonna be you and Dave. All right. But we're this time we're gonna go through the entire alphabet. Okay. So, we have a lot of professors on our college that do not know their alphabet. I can guarantee you that. So. <laughs> Um, and hey, Dave, Y is, and W are very confusing the sounds. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so just think that uh, whatever letter we give you to start with, that you're always the next letter down, and the, the sentence has to start with that letter. All right. Okay. okay. All right. So, Katie, um, where's your favorite place to vacation? Utah. Utah. Yeah. Okay. Right there next to V. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. No, Utah, it is. You, you, there's so many wonderful, glorious things about Utah. We can we can go with on that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, so Paul, what is your favorite letter of the alphabet? What is my favorite letter? I'm going to go with I. I. Wonderful. You're going to start with the letter I, and we're going to have a conversation. You two are going to have a conversation about Utah. Go. Wait, wait. Let's play back the rules. So okay. Do I start with the letter I? Do I start with the letter J? You start with the letter I. Okay. And we're talking about Utah. Utah. Okay. My guess is we won't end talking about Utah. Probably not. You ready? <laughs> All right. I've been to Utah only once, and it was a really beautiful place to visit. Just in time to, to see the, the beautiful foliage in the mountains of Utah, I hear the, the leaves are beautiful. Kind of like the beauty you would see in Nebraska. Let me think about that. I, you know, the, the beauty in Nebraska is hard to beat. I don't know if Utah can, can, can match that. Maybe you should come up with something more creative to say, Dave. No, no, that's that's a good point. I've been, uh, it's summer, so my brain's been turned off a little bit. Obviously. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps I need to do something really invigorating, really exciting to, to try and get my brain going, do something completely new that I've never done before. Question nothing and move forward quickly is not a good idea. Really? Because my, my mom always told me to just go for everything and don't question anything. That's why I went into science. Well, saying whatever is on your mind is turning out to be quite fun in this improv exercise. <laughs> true, true. It keeps me going. Unless you have something really good to say, it's probably better to practice silence. Very good point. I haven't thought tried silence in a long time why are you always pointing your finger at me dave <clears throat> uh, xerox is uh about copying and i always copy myself over and over and over again so uh, i just can't stop pointing my finger it's nothing i'm not trying to be uh insulting Yellow Mellow is a drink that I have not tried in probably about 30 years. Zounds, I've never even had Mellow Yellow. I thought that was a made up thing for some Tom Cruise movie. Well, are we done? Are we... A. Now we're going oh, to start a. back, we keep going to the All A. The yep. Ambition is the first step to creativity, Dave. But ambition and creativity always get mixed together and people don't really know the definition of either. Yeah, caring about others is never overrated. <clears throat> don't I know it. <clears throat> I am all about caring for people. Uh, I just give hugs everywhere I go. Efficiency is also something that can really help when you're working um, within a circus. Four minutes to get anything done, otherwise it's not worth it. That's, that's my motto. Getting it done is my motto. 
module. Hooray, that's a, a wonderful thing. I wish I could get everything done too. All right, there we go. We made it through. That's, uh, that's a really good exercise for the mind. Yes. So one of the things, um, if I have a class that's a little sluggish, I will play one of these games sometimes uh, just to get people motivated, things going. You know, uh, Minister's Cat is fun just because it's brainstorming. It just gets you out of your grind. It gets you out of the mood, the mode, everything. So. Do you, anyway. um, do you teach other professors how to do this in their classes or? Uh, I have I have offered professional development a couple of times. Um, it it wasn't as popular as I would like it to have been, uh, but we have also done it through for student services um, a couple of times. So that has helped quite a bit. So the anybody that's interacting with the students is actually uh, can benefit from this. So if professors would like to do it, actually because of the way we do it at SEC, if you uh, want to take Improv 101. It's actually free for anybody. Oh, cool. Well, I have one final thought. And sure. Thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. Hopefully everybody will enjoy this video. And Dave, I didn't mean to pick on you. I thought that was That's just right. part, of the, part of the game, right? Right. Uh, yeah. So what, in order for um, Katie to be the best liaison to the president, special projects coordinator, I think she should try um, a little shorter version of what we just did, and why 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 not Tim and Katie? Try? Okay, okay. Let's do let's do part of an alphabet. Okay, okay. So, go, Dave. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Paul, what's your favorite ice cream? Uh, vanilla. Vanilla. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Tim, what's give me a letter? Um, we'll go with uh, L. Okay. Katie, why don't you start L and vanilla is the topic. Love me some vanilla ice cream. Me too, but you know, I can't get too crazy. Otherwise, you know, the mind just goes, whoa. No, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, if I eat anything other than vanilla ice cream, it's like then um, I start thinking crazy thoughts. Perhaps you should talk to somebody about that. Quick, do you know the name of an ice cream professor? Robbins, Baskin. So I could probably just do 31 of the flavors instead of 32? Totally. <laughs> totally you could do that or maybe go 33 even. I don't know, you could kind of go all over the place. Unctuousness, that's the what I go for is just that flavor of yum. Uh, okay. Got this, Katie. Um, unctuousness. You could say very interesting. Very strange thing to say, don't you think? Kind of, just really kind of out there. Well, you know, I've already had 14 cups of coffee today, so it's just off the top of my head. I got stuck with the hard letters. Uh, xylophones um, come in many different colors, sort of like different flavors of ice cream. Yak flavor is one that I have never had before. Or zebra flavor is another one that ha has probably not gone very well. Okay, and see, let's stop there before. <laughs> so, somebody it, gets stuck with a really difficult yeah, letter. She would have got a, she would have got um, in trouble for saying or zebra, right? Yes. Yeah. So you for saying or, what? Or can you say? Can you use a preposition? Can you? Nope. Is, well, no. so you said or curious. zebra. Yeah. And you would have been called out on that. And if we're in front of an audience, the audience will call you out. It's no. And does it? Can it actually be? Does it have to be a sentence, or can it be a, a somewhat of a fragment, like zero? So it, it can be fragmented, yes. However, the information, the adding information component of improv is the more you give, the more you give your scene partner to work with. True. So if we, if we just say, yes, sure. Yeah. That's, that's it's fine. That's agreement. Yeah. At one of the po points when we were doing it, I, I, 
I, I gave you like a two word thing right. and you had to pause a while because I, I gave you nothing to work with. Right. So the more, that's the, the and part of it. The more you give, the easier it is. to. Right. to but you also don't want to go too far with it. You right. don't want to tell the entire story. Right. All right. Are you sure yeah. that the two of you just aren't getting really good at this so that you can make up things um, if you're not prepared and no one will even know that you're not prepared? Hmm. No, but you know, so I was thinking about this. I was being evaluated once. Uh, so my associate dean was in the classroom and I was, it was a group of students that uh, there was one guy who was challenging, we'll say for lack of a better phrase. And he, I, he could tell I was being evaluated and he asked a, a really tricky question um, that I didn't, I, it was a John Deere student. I don't know anything about tractors. Um, and you could tell he was just trying to get me, you know, just trying to, to make me look foolish. And so uh, what I'm able to do with this is I, I, I rather than panic, I'm like, I don't know, go away. Uh, I'm able to say, well, all right. And I, I'll ask a question and say, all right, well, what do you mean? What's going on? And it's really kind of calmed my approach to, to mm -hmm. teaching so that when I get a question like that, I don't like panic. I can say, all right, well, tell me about this. And I think it's about this. And then uh, it went smooth and he could not trick me <laughs> so yeah, I, when i interviewed for this um uh, presidency here at the sec they on the last day of the of the interviews uh, it was a final interview we had to go to each campus and we had op a one hour open forum and anyone could be there the community could be there the students, faculty, staff, and they could ask any question that they wanted. And it was fascinating. It was kind of similar to, mm -hmm. to this. Uh, it was really interesting. I see you're all sitting now, so let me sit. All right. <laughs> but it, one of the things I, I started doing improv, I don't know, 15 years ago or more. There's a group here in town called Lipstick, and I was helped get that group going. And I did it when I was in Long Beach out there too. And one of the things it does is it gives you this comfort level um, that people can give you a question. And if you don't know the answer, you can still answer the question without, you know, without uh, flagrantly lying. Mm -hmm. But you can, you can try to be funny, you try to be witty all that that goes along with it but i've always been it always improv even though it's all made up is still honest mm -hmm. still very honest and it allows me to be honest in front of a group of people so i use it in public speaking all the time because standing in, up in front and listening to somebody talk constantly is boring sometimes audience interaction and the questions is a challenge mm -hmm. and it's it's helped so much just in that. So it's fun. We like it. In fact, we've got OH rehearsal tonight. Great. Yeah, well, this, it, it really is fascinating. It really is interesting. It makes you um, kind of let go of some of your ways of thinking. And just don't worry about saying the wrong thing. Like you said, it's a very honest kind of endeavor. So I've had in, in my in my 101 class, I have had so many professors from all over the city. I've had cancer doctors, um, Toastmasters mm -hmm. in there, because improv does something different than you know Toastmasters or speech making. That's very different. Being able to you know the the head of Toastmasters for the region was in my class and she said that there's a subject or there's a it's called table topics or something like that in Toastmasters, and she goes it would just freak her out because she had no idea what to talk about. After doing improv, she came in and she's like, uh, I can do table topics. In fact, I'm one of the first ones, and they have to tell me to shut up because you get a name or you get a a, a topic and just being able to talk about it for two minutes. It's, it, it frees your mind. So. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you guys so much. Katie, do you have anything to add to the? To Thank so, you. I mean, I didn't want to point out that you guys took my banana cream pie and went Boston cream pie with it, which I don't even think it's really a pie, but you know, I'll let it go. Thanks. Katie. <laughs> hey, 
I think I was the one that did that. Did Everything is true in improv. Everything is true. I did that and I did it. It's the same thing. I'm not going to eat it. It is very different. Sorry. Is it? Yeah. Cream, cake, banana. Uh, it's, yeah. All right. This was a great video. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. And maybe we'll talk to Tim and Dave about trying a little bit of improv on their own. Maybe they can take one of your classes or just reach out. You guys have some of those classes this fall? Yes coming up uh, through continuing ed. And I believe they're gonna start in, 101 is gonna start in October. Cool. And maybe we also get you on the professional development schedule to see if we can. Would like that. Yeah. You know what would be really fun? What if every new employee had to engage in improv on their first day of orientation? I think it would be great, but. Probably would lose a lot of new employees. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, got to listen to me for about 30 minutes about gold mine. Well, there's there's a there's a there's a, something coming up through the executive committee for training. Anyway. Oh right, right. I'm on that team. Yeah, we just so, uh, received the presentation today from Stephanie. Yeah. And so um, I had actually kind of slipped that in at one point, but I'm not sure. <laughs> if you need it. Yeah. Sure. So. Sounds cool. Yeah, and your next challenge is to incorporate goal nine into that, but I guess it's already incorporated in terms of transparency and thinking, you know, respecting different views and mm -hmm. ideas that others have. One of the things that uh, Tim taught us in 101 is, and this is one of the first thing he teaches, is that improv, is, it, doing this for the first time is terrifying. And so anytime we end a game or something like that, we clap for one another. And I actually incorporated it into a class. Like physics and math are terrifying. So I uh, had everybody one, one semester uh, stand up and I had math problems and a hat. It was all uh, written out and it, everyone was the wrong answer. And I said, this is your chance. You're gonna get it wrong, but we're still gonna cheer for you. Uh, the, the idea building, you're gonna get stuff wrong this semester and that's okay. And so it, the, some of the students probably thought I was nuts, which is fine, but it was, one plus one is four. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's all right, good job. And like, I made everybody clap and, and participate so that they were comfortable making a mistake in my room. So. You know, I think the other thing when I think about the sort of the um, implications associated with improv and what we just did, this would be fantastic for leadership skill build, building because one of the things that you have to do in leadership, as you know, as we go through this, COVID response, it's all this planning. We're never gonna get it perfect. So we have to go ahead and try something and get it mm -hmm. out there and see how it goes. And maybe just like improv, you, you don't have a choice. You have to throw something out there and maybe it works and maybe it doesn't. But that re re reducing your fear of failure is super important in leadership. If you're worried about being perfect too much and not you know, using the best data that you have to make a decision and move it forward, that's really key. Well, and the other thing with that, Paul, is that that's very true. Uh, the other thing is, is like I said, one of the rules in, in improv is go to the absurd, okay? If, you, if you're kind of, if it starts to get boring to listen to, it's boring. Right. right. So you go <laughs> I, to the I thought like there were some times in there that was, I was listening too much to one of the things you said earlier, which is kind of play off of what you know. I don't, I think you probably meant, or I, I'm guessing it really is, don't worry about trying to play up what you know, it's gonna happen naturally. In mm -hmm. my absurd response is gonna be different than Dave's absurdity because of our past. It is, and, and when you think about going to the absurd, even in a leadership meeting, because everybody's on a baseline sometimes, and if you go to the absurd, it's like, okay, you broke the baseline now. This is never going to happen. This is where we are. Can we figure something else out in the middle in there? So what it does is it, it, it allows for people to start thinking about other things. I had and something then, funny to say, but I'm not going to say it because I'd probably get in trouble. Right, Katie? It's just the four of us. What are you talking about? Yeah, we'll get a video. He was probably going to make fun of me. <laughs> no, I was going to make fun of my person. My go-to is Stu Ostertune. So I was going to say when I go to this, when I want to go to the absurd, I just say, Stu, what do you think? Yep. <laughs> now, Stu, I, I'm going to get in trouble for that, actually. But no, I, I do. No. Stu and I have a little bit of a comic routine that we do when I need to lighten. You know, we, we 
you know, uh, I tease him and he's teasing me back and it just gets everybody laughing and chilling out for a second, get your mind off of the tension. And I think humor in, and I think that's where improv is, is wonderful is having the ability to laugh at your circumstances is really important. And, and with improv, it's like, you don't ever have to try to be funny with improv because it's made up. Right. And because we tend to bring in the stuff that we know or things that just pop into our head, it ends up being funny. Sure. And you're right. Humor will is a great, you know, leveler because it gets everybody out of whatever funk they're in. If you can get people to laugh. Right. You know, that's, 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 that's what I'm going to bring this up in our admin team meeting. This is fun. All right, we better shut this video yep. down, Katie. But thank you, Dave, yeah. and thank you, Tim. Thank you, Katie. Thanks. You guys were great. Yeah, thank Sorry, you Katie, you got they, they were mean to you with the you did get the worst letters. I did. We'll, we'll, we'll send you we'll send you a, a a Boston banana cream pie and see what you think. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, thank you, everyone. Everyone have a good rest of your afternoon. Thanks, you guys. See ya.